Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and sometimes things are funny with the way they work out. I was actually thinking about earlier this week, for uh, completely different reasons, doing a video, Is Crying Engine Dead? And today, I have a whole new set of reasons for doing that potential video that we will get to in a second. But first, I kind of want to talk about CryEngine itself and why I think, well, CryEngine might be done. So here we are. Uh, this is the CryEngine webpage. Uh, it's a very interesting game engine. It's been around for quite a while. Originally, uh, Powered Crisis, uh, and, you know, the ongoing meme, Can It Run Crisis. Uh, it was the best-looking, most realistic game engine of the time. And then things happened. Uh, you know, it's been used to make several games since. It's a couple successful ones published by Crytek themselves lately, The, the Hunt Showdown, The Climb, uh, and a few others. They also made uh, uh, Rome, Son of, no, Rise, Son of Rome. Uh, it made uh, MechWarrior Online. It originally was making Star Citizen and so on. So there's quite a few game engines out, or games that are powered by the uh, CryEngine game engine. And with the 5.x release, it got a lot more lightweight, was getting more interesting. And then something happened, or more specifically, something didn't happen. So if you take a look at the CryEngine webpage, and we scroll on down and we look through all the news, we're going to find very little news about CryEngine. In fact, here are the release notes of the last major release of CryEngine, and the key thing to see is this number right there. July 28th, 2019. So it has been, sorry, June 28th, 2019. So it has been two years since the last release of CryEngine. And the upcoming release is supposed to be something very exciting. It's supposed to add mobile support. It's supposed to add uh, non-RTX powered ray tracing on all hardware out there. It's going to be a huge release. And it's been two years, and that hasn't happened. So it starts to make you wonder, okay, is CryEngine in trouble? Well, that's not the extent of the story. Now, the kicker is, in order to get this part, we got to go back in time a little bit further. And we're now back in 2015, and this is where Amazon spent big bucks to acquire Crytek's engine. Uh, Crytek was in trouble. They were in a lot of trouble. And they've been in a lot of trouble a number of times in the past. Basically, they were at the point where they could no longer pay their employees, um, they were locked out the doors. They were uh, basically on the verge of bankruptcy. And then Amazon jumped in and gave them a huge sum of money. Now, this article says $50 million, but I believe it actually ended up being north of $200 million. And what they got as a result of that was CryEngine's uh, source code, a license to it, and that ultimately turned into the game engine Lumberyard. And the entire idea behind Lumberyard was they were going to use Lumberyard at Amazon Game Studios, and it made a lot of sense. Amazon was getting heavily into games. They would have their own game engine, plus they would license it out to other people, and as long as you used Amazon's web technologies, Amazon's S3, Amazon's web services, Twitch integration, that kind of stuff, you could use it completely for free. Uh, that didn't work out though. And that's a horror story into and of itself. I was going to make a video about that at some point in time, but so many people have covered this already. Basically, there's nothing really wrong with Lumberyard. There's a lot of really smart people working on Lumberyard. There's a lot of smart people working at Amazon Game Studios. The problem is there's also a lot of idiots, and they're all in management. When you hear some of the stories of the people in leadership roles at Amazon Game Studios, they are morons, absolutely utter morons. If you guys are interested, maybe I'll do a follow-up video on that. Let me know in the comments down below. But let's just say brutal mismanagement led to some really big problems at Amazon Game Studios. I think they've got uh, two games shipped successfully. One was a Top Gear game that was... <clears throat> another one was another... <clears throat> uh, two or three delayed indefinitely and three or four that were canceled. So it has not been a good end result over there. But again, they put the wrong people in charge. You can't really put it on the people working on those games. It was the people leading those people. Just horror stories. But anyways, what we had earlier this month on July the 6th, Amazon open-sourced... Lumberyard as the O3DE engine. I'm not going to get into a ton of details on this, but this is truly open source. It's under the, I think it was Apache 2 license. Yeah, Apache 2 source code license. And they've got a number of pretty successful companies behind this, or pretty big name companies behind this. So we've got um, Adobe, Auto, um, Audio Kinetic, uh, Wargaming, Side Effects, the makers of Houdini, uh, Niantic, Open Robotics, Popcorn Effects, and so on. All these companies are going to partner with them to work on the source code there. So it could turn into a very interesting project. Now, the interesting thing about the launch of O3DE is the number one company that lost out there was definitely Crytek slash CryEngine because they are competing with a product based on their own product that is now free and open source and has more industry support behind it. 
All told, not a good development for Crytek, for sure. And that is where we lead to today's rumor. Now, I gotta point out, this is a rumor. It comes from BILD, uh, which is a German publication. It's a legit publication. It's sort of like the equivalent of the German Wall Street Journal or the, you know, it's, it's a business uh, kind of oriented uh, post. It, it, it's not gaming, it's not generally speculative, so it can probably be trusted. Uh, and what they're saying is that Tencent wants to buy the game and software developer via their European subsidiary and has left multiple uh, concerned employees at Crytek uh, that Tencent could be for non-commercial purposes. Now, the interesting thing here right now is CryEngine is, and as far as I can tell, the last story I saw was like 20, 2011, 2012. Uh, the U.S. Army licensed CryEngine to make military simulations. And I imagine they're probably still using it because they don't change these things very often. So uh, CryTech, the CryEngine game engine, is being used by Western militaries to do military simulations. So that's problematic because Tencent, well, Tencent is essentially, uh, it, it's attached at the hip to the Chinese government. There's no way uh, that you can spin that any other way. If the Chinese government says jump, Tencent jumps. If they sh if they want to shut them down, they can just shut them down overnight. So they are uh, definitely a, a concern there in that regard. So uh, Crytek, again, best known for things like Crisis uh, Hunt Showdown and Climb. Those are all published by Crytek and doing pretty well. There was a remaster of Crisis recently. The Hunt did really well. The Climb did really well on the Oculus. Um, so they seem to be doing pretty well as a game publisher. As a game engine publisher, they, they've gone radio silent. It's been two years since we got the last release. So in a world that has Unreal Engine and Unity and Godot, uh, and now what we've got is um, Lumberyard as O3DE, open source, based off the same you know basic kernel as the CryEngine itself, uh, that's not really good. And then we get into uh, Crytek themselves. Well, they've been talking to a number of companies about being bought out. They're they're in trouble. I don't know if they're poorly managed or what's going on over there, but Crytek is constantly in trouble. Uh, they've also been hiring recently too, so it can't be that, that bad. I don't know if they've actually got a job listing down there. No, but I see them on my Twitter feed every once in a while. Cry, uh, Crytek are constantly hiring new people, so they're not going out of business or anything, but the rumor is they have been looking to get bought uh, $300 million, and let's just face it, um, Tencent, well, Tencent kind of owns uh, the gaming industry. They, they've bought into just about everything. Let's go take a look at what they own. This is their uh, foreign investments. This here, this is their domestic. So their domestic stuff um, is uh, really large in China itself, but we're going to talk about the Western markets, in which case they outright own Riot Games. They own Funcom, they own Liu, and they own Shark Mob. On top of that, they basically own Supercell, Grinding Gear Games. They have a 40% stake in Epic Games. That has been diluted since because Epic has done a number of offerings since. So each time you do that, you're going to have smaller and smaller uh, ownership stake as a result. But you get paid, so it works out either way. Uh, Fat Shark, they own 36%. Uh, then we get into like small stakes in Netmarble, Marvelous. Uh, and then we get into um, small stakes, but in huge companies. So we're talking here Activision, Ubisoft, Paradox, Remedy. Uh, yeah. They're quite quite big, and then we got majority stakes. No, we don't know the number. Uh, in Mini Clip, Klee, uh, Ten Chamber Collective, Jagger, uh, and then the minority stakes in Voodoo, Bohemia Interactive, which interestingly enough also supplies military simulations, and they make the Arma based games. And they own a chunk of Discord, Roblox, and Platinum Games. So if you want to look at a company that pretty much owns the gaming industry. Uh, Tencent is probably the biggest single owner in uh, the largest chunks of the game. The other ones would be either uh, Activision Blizzard went on a buying spree, which ironically now 5% of what they bought is now owned by Tencent. Uh, I don't think EA would even get up there. So I think at this point in time, Tencent is probably the biggest company in gaming. So that on itself, it kind of makes sense that they would consider picking up uh Cry Tech and Cry Engine. Uh, it could even be that you know you own that many game studios outright. It's sort of like the Amazon theory of let's own our own game engine. That could make sense too. Uh, it could be more insidious that they want the back door into military simulation market. I think that angle of the story is probably a little bit overblown. I don't think someone like the U.S. government would trust Cry Tech to start with, especially like a company so on the verge of financial instability for so long. Anyways. Uh, the brass in charge of the military would have to be really stupid to like let a company like that that's been on the verge of bankruptcy and locking out their employees and all that as a key uh, 
strategic partners militarily. I just I don't think that part of the story is really that important, but it is there. I, I am interested to hear. Uh, I have two questions for you. First one, ignoring the whole Tencent acquisition rumor, do you think CryEngine is in trouble in the first place? Now, I'm focusing more on CryEngine than CryTech. I, I know they're a game maker, but this is a game development channel. Two years since we've seen an update. And it's a shame, too, because that update was going to be huge. That was going to bring us ray tracing on non-ray tracing hardware, and it was going to bring mobile support to CryEngine. That, th those are pretty big things. Uh, but it's been radio silent for a very long time. So do you think they were in trouble anyways? And when you look at the O3DE game engine being completely open sourced and free, that had to be close to a nail in the coffin. At least that was why I was thinking about doing a video on is CryEngine dead in the first place. And now we have these 10 cent acquisition rumors, 300 million euro. It's hard to say no to. So what do you think is going to happen? Uh, do you think this is the beginning of the end? And what do you think of Tencent? I know uh, I, I get a lot of comments about Tencent when I talk about certain companies. I know they're not everyone's favorite. So uh, let me know these things. Comments down below. Talk to you all later. Goodbye.